8.32! Oh god, I overslept! I'm gonna have to make this video really quick today. Should I just speak louder? Faster? Mm, let's see what I have here. Uh, oh! Sirdbot! Greetings, master. Yo, so, okay, so, Sirdbot, listen, I, I overslept, forgot to make a video. C could you, like, generate one for me real quick? All right, master, generating video, beep, boop, bop, boop, bop, beep, boop, 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 video, complete. All right, all right, awesome. Could you play it for me? Playing video. Window upgrade. A documentary by some random dude about a plugin by some random dude. The window upgrade plugin is a new plugin that upgrades the window system. It's an extension of the game upgrade plugin, so make sure you have this installed. While I'm at it, as you can see, I've also added some parameters to the game upgrade plugin, so be sure to update this if you like. Anyway, going back to the window upgrade plugin, as you can see, it has a variety of features. While it does not have many parameters, these parameters hold a lot of power within them. You may also notice that there are actually a lot of parameters based off of older plugins that have been updated to the new 1.5.0 parameter system. To start, let's look at all these parameters. The first one is a multiple layers parameter, which allows you to toggle on whether or not the window layer system will use multiple layers or a single layer. If we set it to false, it'll look like this. Otherwise, if we set on like this, it'll look like this. The next parameter allows you to customize the defaults of the window values, stuff such as the standard font size, the standard padding, to stuff like the opening speed and the closing speed of the windows. Simply customize them here and you'll be good to go. The stretch options plugin is another feature based off of a previously existing plugin that I made. Originally, that plugin made so you can make it so your window frame repeats instead of stretching, as it does by default in RPG Maker MV. However, this plugin also adds the ability to customize this for both the background and the foreground of windows also, so if you wish to change them, you can do so right here. Similar to the stretch options, the tone options parameter allows you to customize how certain parts of a window interact with another feature, this feature being the tone. As you see, by default, the background is the only thing that the window has that's affected by the window's tone. However, now I can toggle it so the frame is also affected by the window's tone, along with the cursor being affected by the window's tone. For example, if we set it so the frame is affected by the tone like this, you can now see the frame is affected by the tone. The game colors parameter allows you to directly input HTML or CSS colors for all the game colors within your game. By default, if you leave them blank, they'll just use the default colors. However, if you customize them, say for example we can customize the HP gauge color 1 by doing pound sign 00FF00 and then adding another color to HP gauge 2 by doing pound sign CCFF CC like so. Now as you can see in game, the HP gauges are now green based off those HTML colors as opposed to their default reddish color that you see earlier. The final parameter is once again an existing feature taken from my previous plugins. This allows you to customize the text colors using hex, HTML, or CSS codes. As you can see right here, each text color is assigned a different code based on HTML. In fact, you can even add more and go up to 50 text colors as you see right here. As you can guess, if you input something for a text color 2, like a different HTML code right here, that code will be used in your message windows or other windows involving text colors by just inputting it right here. This overwrites a default system which relies upon the window.png file to obtain the text colors. If you wish to disable this function and still rely on the window.png, however, you can actually disable it by just turning this off right here. Now something you may be thinking is, wow, we're out of parameters, I guess this plugin's over, but you would be incorrect. After all, there are three new eventing features that have been added through this plugin. The first one being the info windows. Let's review it by opening up this parameter right here. Info windows are windows that can be opened up in game that show a bunch of information. To customize them, use this parameter right here to add info windows to your game. As you can see right here, info windows have a couple properties including width, line height, default font size, and the text within the window itself as you see right here. Let's set it so the default font size is going to be 24. We'll set it so the line height is going to be 28, and we'll just leave the width as it is currently. Now let's go to our text and customize some text to go inside the window. We'll say, this is an info window. We will spell everything correctly. If you wish to add a horizontal line at any point, simply use a tag hr and a horizontal line will be put there. We can also use escape characters, so we can do backslash C, then 3, like so, and then type in this is colored to represent the fact that that line is going to be colored, while the other lines will not be colored. 
Once you're done typing in stuff, you can then close out of here by hitting OK, just like this. Now we have an info window. If we leave out of here, we'll see that this info window is listed right here as info window number one. Now let's go into our game and make an event. We'll go to a spot right here to create our event. We'll have this event open one of our info windows by using a plugin command. We'll go to the third tab to open the plugin command event right here. To open up an info window with a plugin command, simply use a plugin command, create info window, then the ID of the window. As you recall, that window's ID was number one, because it was the first in the list. Simply input a one right there, and this event shall open that window. While we're at it, let's also add some events behind this. We'll go in here, go to show text and say, the window is closed. This will show off a new feature later. Now that we are in the game, let us interact with this event right here. As you can see, by interacting with this event, it'll open a window with the specified inputs we created. As you can see, it has a text, font size, and line height we specified. By pushing the enter button or the Z button, we can close window and continue the event like normal. This format is especially helpful for things such as books, signs, or other static information the player wants to read. By default, players are forced to use a message window, but this helps make it better. The next type of window is a choice window. Now you may be a little confused, because RPG Maker already has a choice window. However, this is a special choice window that gives you more control over what appears. Anyway, like before, we'll use a plugin command. This plugin command, on the other hand, is called create choice window. First, you need to input a variable ID. This variable ID will store the resulting value the player chooses from this choice window. For this example, we'll make it variable ID 3, like so. Next, we'll have to list out all of our choices separated by commas. So we'll say something like, yes, comma, I'm not sure, and then no, just like that to represent the three choices for our create choice window function. Since the value is going to be stored into variable three, we can use that to check and put results into the event. For example, if the variable ID three is set to zero, that means the first choice was selected. So we'll go to variable ID three, like so, select it and check whether it was equal to zero. If it was equal to zero, that means yes was selected. If it was equal to one, that means I'm not sure was selected. If it was set to two, that means the no selection was selected. So we'll reflect this by inputting stuff such as you said yes, like so. We'll also make it so this one says you are not sure, like that. And finally, we'll have this one say you said no to represent what will happen when the player chooses a choice. Now by interacting with this event, our special choice window shall appear. As you can see, it has three choices. Yes, I'm not sure, and no. Let's select yes for testing purposes. As you can see, it says we said yes. If we select the other options, as you can see, it'll specify those as other options have been stated. This function is more helpful for larger choices that require some contemplation or maybe light novel style choices that require you to have more text within the choice. However, let's say you want to customize this choice window. To do so, you need to use a different plugin command. Let's open up our event manager and click on plugin command and paste in the set choice window data plugin command. Within here, you can specify columns, rows, and alignment. For example, let's set it to two columns, two rows, and set the alignment to the left, just like that. Make sure you specify left, right, or center in all lowercase like so. Next, make sure this plugin command is pasted above the first plugin command so it sets a data and then creates a window. Finally, since it's going to have two rows and two columns, we should also make sure that our choice window has four options to make up for that. Now, as you can see, when we interact with this event right here, our choice window now has two columns and two rows for our four choices in total. Now the final and most complex custom event window is going to be the question window. This portrays a question and gives some choices within one window. To create it, we're going to actually need two plugin commands by default. The first plugin command being the set question window choices, which allows us to set up the choices. We'll make these choices simple. One, comma, two, comma, three, like so, and then close out of the plugin command. Let's set this plugin command above all the other variable checks. To actually create the question window, we shall use this plugin command. We will do create message window, the variable ID the result will be stored in. So for this example, we'll use three again, and then the message that appears within the question window. We'll make this message, what is your favorite number? And we'll leave it like this. 
If you wish to set up a new line, simply use backslash n. Then we can input more. For example, mine is 24. We can even do more lines and do you know something else, such as you know what's funnier? Nothing. Now we'll hit OK to close out of our plug command and paste it on top of all these variable inputs, but paste it below the set question choices so the choices affect our creation of our question window. Now when we interact with this event, this is the result. As you can see, it shows our message and also gives us a choice. We'll select one for this example, and as you can see, it says we selected number one. The other choices, once again, like with the other choice window, reflect on what we chose. Once again, like with the other choice window, we can customize the various data using a plugin command. This plugin command will be set question window data along with the columns, rows, and alignment. So for this example, we'll do columns once again to two, rows to two, and alignment to the left, like so. Remember, make sure your alignment is always lowercase. Once it is ready, once again, place it above the create message window plugin command. And of course, since we have two columns and two rows, let's add another choice such as 50, like so. Now, as you can see, when we interact with this person, it'll open up this choice window with these four choices and a two by two grid. So it worked. Good job. Anyway, that was all the window upgrade plugin has to offer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you may give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can download the plugin in the link in the description along with a link to the terms of use and a link to my Patreon if you wish to help support more plugins like this and videos with riveting content. Anyway, that is all for now. Until next time.